Hello and welcome to a new video about AC, alternating current. Today we're talking about a pretty important topic. Yeah? Because, well, we know there is active power, we know there's reactive power. Yeah? And we, I told you this reactive power, it, it is not really usable. Yeah? Because it's power which is transferred there and transferred back. We talked a while ago about this, this, this stuff. Here I have, I have my sheet. Yeah. So this was, this was this stuff. Yeah. Momentary power, active power, apparent power, re reactive power. Yeah. And this reactive power, I said, this cannot be used. But I have to transmit it over my network. And as a network provider or network operator, yeah, I must say. Why should I provide resources to deliver something which cannot even be used? So, today we try to, to correct our power factor a little bit. So, our power factor should not be that high. I have the situation here. We will make the following example. We will make an example of an RL combination. Uh, RL, series combination. I have chosen this example because it's relatively often in the wild, uh, appearing in the wild. For instance, every motor, trans transformator or something like this, these are coils inside there, so there is inductive load and there is a resistance. RL combinations are common. Uh, and I want to show you how to compensate the power factor or partly compensate, we will talk about partly compensation, the power factor of uh, such thing. Let's analyze the situation for a moment. Yeah? So we have a voltage and we will switch our motor, our transformator or whatever to this voltage. All right? So we have here, passing through our RL combination, our IRL. Okay? That's the current passing through. So we have a voltage. This voltage in the in the pointer diagram, I will draw this in here. So this is here our U. Our voltage U, here it is. Yeah. And when we talked about the series combination, now we know our IRL has a certain certain value and has a phase. Yeah. So this is IRL here. Hmm. And here we have a phase. VRL. This is our phase. This is our phase between U and, and I. I is behind, so we have a positive. This this VRL is positive. Yeah? And now let's think how UR and UL must look like in this situation when this I just assumed now a V. So actually UR and UL in total, in sum, must be U. Uh, so I now, I hopefully I can realize that, that here we have 90 degree. Uh, I think it's looking good. I'm not entirely sure. Here. In phase with I is UR. Uh, and here, going up here, also 90 degree. And here parallel, oh, looking not too bad. This must be UL. Uh -huh. UL and UR in combination in sum must be U. And UL is 90 degree before IRL. Uh -huh. And UR is in phase with IRL. This is how this would look like. This is how this would look like. All right. So let's have a look at our power triangle. So we have here our, our active power P. Here's our active power P. We have a certain reactive power QRL. This is QRL. And we have an apparent power here. This is SRL. And here we have our VRL. Here we have our VRL, our phase angle. 
This is how this would look like. This is the situation. Here this SRL is actually U multiplied by IRL. This is U multiplied by I is the apparent power. The, the, the absolute value of the apparent power. We have an angle. All right. Yeah. And now what we want to do is that we are reducing this phi. Okay. We want to reduce this phi. This means I can either try to pull up I, RL, in this direction, or I can pull down U in this direction. So if I want to lower, I say, hey, look at that. Here's UL. But what if I'm reducing this with an UC? Huh? Then I just make a C in there. Then I have a UC and our total voltage is now smaller, uh, is, now, is now different and we will shift this a little bit to this direction. Hmm. It's true. However, I have then in series one additional element and I have there a voltage drop. Uh, there's a C inside, there's a voltage drop, so, and I, I don't want to operate my, my motor, my transformator at a lower voltage. Uh, this is working, this would be ser uh, serial compensation. This is uh, usually not used. Uh, usually not used. What is used, though, is we will add a capacitor, of course, uh, here. This is where we add a capacitor, C, in parallel. All right. Here I have then passing through an IC, capacitor current, and I'm ending up with an I, which is now the sum of RL and IC. Yeah? No longer just RL, I have also IC. What, how does it look like in the, in the diagram? How does this look like in the diagram? Here I have an IRL. I see must be now 90 degree before you. Here is you. Huh? So I see must be 90 degree before that. Huh? So I draw it in. Here is I see. 90 degree before you. Because simply this is how, how <laughs> capacitors work. Yeah? And this I here is now IR L plus I see. Now let's summarize these two. There is a parallelogram. We'll end up in this point. Yeah? So now let's have a look what has happened. Here is my eye now. Here is now my eye. Look at the phase shift. Here I have now a new phase shift. A phi total, a phi t. Phi t. <laughs> A phi total phi, yeah, which is smaller than our original phi RL. This is actually what we wanted, right? This is actually what we wanted. Now, the only thing we have to, 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 to think about or to calculate somehow is how do we get the value of, of our C? How big must the C be that we are reaching a certain target? Target, uh, phase value, uh, target power factor. Let's analyze this for a moment. Uh, so we have our QRL, which is actually our SRL yeah, multiplied by sinus VRL. Right? This is QRL, trigonometry, we have here rectangle, everything fine. What is our P? P is actually our SRL multiplied by the power factor, cosinus phi. Cosinus phi RL. Yeah. From this, we can follow our SRL equals P divided by cosinus phi RL. I'll put this in here. So we have here P multiplied by sinus phi RL divided by cosinus phi RL. Sine divided by cosinus is tangents, so we're ending up at P multiplied by tangents phi RL. Of course, I could have just used the tangents and say it's, 
it's uh, opposite, divided by adjacent, and then it would also lead to this formula. Yeah? But then it would not be that complicated. And <laughs> yeah, just repeat how those old things uh, work together. Okay. So this is the situation here. This would be our QRL. Huh? And we're ending up, where we're ending up? We're ending up at a new S total yeah, with a much lower power, power angle. Here is now our S total, ST. Huh? Here we have our new improved uh, phi T yeah? and our remaining remaining QT. Hmm? This is my QT, which is remaining. So actually, let's make the same, let's make the same trick here. Hmm? Exactly the same. So my QT equals ST multiplied by sine of phi T. Yeah? And my P, P has not changed, so it's the same. I don't have an index. P is ST multiplied by cosinus phi t. And now make the same stuff like there. So we're ending up in a situation where we say qt equals p multiplied by tangens phi t. It's the same procedure. Huh? Same procedure as every time, <laughs> every year. Dinner for one, right? The 90th birthday. Uh, all right. What must be what must be the the reactive power of my capacitor? This here. This must be this going down here. This is my reactive power of my capacitor, my QC. All right. So my QC actually is my QRL minus my total QQT. This must be my QC. This I want. Huh? This is the QC I want. So where are we ending up? I just used those two. QRL is P multiplied by tangents phi RL minus P multiplied by tangents phi T. Which is then, and now I'm factoring out P, P multiplied bracket tangents phi rl minus tangents phi t. This must be our, our reactive power of the capacitor, exactly this value. How do we calculate the reactive power of the capacitor? The reactive power of the capacitor is, well, there is no active power of the capacitor, so the reactive power of the capacitor, qc, is exactly voltage, which is u, multiplied by current, which is I see. Huh? That's one. That's, this is how we calculate this. Huh? And now let's think about what I see is. I see equals Ohm's law, which is by the way important. Yeah? U divided by, and now I need the, the uh, resistance, the, 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 the AC resistance of my C, and this was 1 divided by omega C. So we're ending up at I C equals U multiplied by omega C. Now I combine those two yeah, and end up where I can write Q C equals U multiplied by U multiplied by omega C, which is U squared multiplied by omega C. This is how you calculate U C. This is also U C. Yeah? So Let's calculate C out of this. So here I take this formula, my C equals QC divided by mm, U squared omega. This may be a little bit too big fraction line, but I was, I was in mood. <laughs> now I take this one. So we have here, now I need a big fraction line. Ooh P multiplied by tangents phi RL minus tangents phi T. Phi T can also call target. Huh? This is the target phi I want to reach. 
And here, u squared multiplied by omega. This is the value of c I would need to add in this combination yeah, that I can compensate my power factor from this phi to this phi. Of course, if you, of course you could say my target phi is zero. Yeah. Then this would also lead to the correct value, whatever you like. Yeah. It's not always recommended to go to zero. Sometimes you want to stay a little bit in one direction. Uh, this depends a little bit on the situation in the network. Uh, so this is why I said, okay, there must be a target fee, uh, a total fee, a target fee uh, must be there so that we can easily calculate our needed capacitor uh, for correcting our power factor to a more pleasant situation for our network. And now our network operator is satisfied. If you have big inductive load or the capacitive load, then it's working the other way around. Then you would compensate it with a coil, uh, with an inductance. Uh, but it's working exactly the same way. Uh, if you have bigger load and so on, this is even, it's not only recommended, it's required to do so. Uh, this is written in a contract between the network operator and the consumer. Power factor correction. This was the last topic I wanted to tell you about AC. Huh? Well, it's not entirely true. This is the last topic in this series of videos about AC. But there is more about AC. There's more phase AC. Right? This is the topic what we are going to deal in an upcoming, the next series of video more phase AC. Yeah? So it's not only one AC system, it's more AC systems. It's not enough one player. Yeah? More. Why we do that? How this looks like? I'll explain in a new series of video. You don't have to watch it, but I would recommend. Yeah? For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.